Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi everyone, welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Catherine. And I'm Rachel. And you know, today we're going to the coolest spot on the planet, um, the coldest, driest place on Earth, um, and that is Antarctica. And this one, uh, this topic is Catherine's baby. She really wanted to talk about this, which I think is really funny because <laughs> you're from uh, you're from Jamaica. Exactly. So I'm just imagining you like freezing in Antarctica. <laughs> I would. I just like penguins, so, you know, I wanted to call You would it. brave the cold for penguins. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. So, first of all, I guess I was wondering, I think you knew this, but mm-hmm. I didn't know. So, who owns Antarctica, right? Yeah. Well, nobody and everybody. Hmm. Technically, it is owned by science. Wow. What because, does that mean? Um, so, over the years, like, various nations sort of tried to lay claims to Antarctica, mm-hmm. and that didn't work out. So, in 1959, there was this treaty signed by, I think, 48 nations saying basically that Antarctica is an international kind of property that should be reserved for scientific endeavors. And so they each, some of the countries have set up stations there on the base of the South Pole and they, they probably, uh, they do their own research there and they also cooperate probably in other areas. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. Yeah, definitely. And you know, Antarctica, just to give you an idea of the size, it's uh, a more than I would say about five million square miles and interestingly it's actually a desert it's considered desert um, because it gets less than two inches of rain per year yeah so it's very dry very very, very cold dry. very dry exactly it's sounding wonderful already I know. <laughs> I'm just ready for vacation <laughs> <laughs> so in summer um, an average might be about 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative six degrees Celsius hmm. um, and then in the winter which is the coldest you might have an average of about negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 34 Celsius, but it can get way lower than that. Yeah, yeah. Didn't they record like a really low temperature there? Yeah, this uh, is another like, ooh, go to Antarctica. <laughs> wow. So the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was captured in Antarctica uh-huh. in 1983, and that was minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. Wow. Holy cow. That is cool. But if you are one of those brave, crazy people who, you know, wants to head to Antarctica, um, here's kind of how the population stacks up. Mm -hmm. So in the winter, which is the coldest, it's only going to be about 1,000 people, and those are pretty much mostly scientists and people working on the bases there. Mm -hmm. But then in the summer, that number, you get a lot of, like, uh, scientific assistants coming in, so that shoots up to 5,000. And then you also have the tourists, so that's another 50,000 people. Yeah, I didn't realize that that many uh, tourists had been to Antarctica. That was yeah, that is really surprising. Yeah, it was a really big number. You might be wondering, what am I going to see if I was to take one of those cruises? The first thing is most of the cruises will come through the Drake Passage, which is between the tip of South America and the Antarctica region itself. And it's a really rough crossing. It was pretty uh, famous in, in earlier times because you know a lot of the ships would, would cross through that to get to the other side before the days of the Panama Canal. And it's a very rough crossing, so you can expect like enormous waves. You know, you might hit uh, gale force winds, icebergs. You know, it's a pretty rough crossing to go through that spot. Sometimes, because of that fact, your trip may get delayed. Right, right. Because of because of weather and stuff. Exactly, exactly. But if you do make it through, you will be rewarded mm-hmm. with views of penguins mm-hmm. and icebergs and all the wonderful things that um, you know make Antarctica worth traveling. Yeah, to. just just approaching the approach by sea is just absolutely beautiful as you see all of that coming into view. Just make sure you're bundled up. (laughs) You're bundled up, exactly. (laughs) So as you spot your animals as you come along. (laughs) And speaking of penguins, Mm -hmm. this this takes us to Catherine's favorite part (laughs) of the episode. Because Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned before you you love penguins. I do. Yeah, I do. (laughs) Antarctica is kind of famous for its penguin. It's kind of like the unofficial mascot, I guess, of the continent, Mm -hmm. penguins. Uh, But there are six species that are found in the region. Um, The Adeli, the Gentoo, King, Macaroni... Emperor and chin strap, mm-hmm. and uh, Catherine and I were just looking at pictures of these these little guys, and they look yeah. so cute. Yeah, they ab- absolutely adorable, and and each is very distinctive, you know. Yeah, they all have different markings. I think my favorite is probably the macaroni penguin. Yeah. Just because it has those funny, I don't even know what you'd call them. The little the, plumes on top. The, the, yeah, the, the the spiky hair. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Little orange plumes. Yeah. They're yeah. like punk penguins, I guess. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. And my favorite was the emperor penguin, which is one of only two that's found um, right in the heart of Antarctica. And those were the ones that were made famous in the movie March of the Penguins, which I love. So another a non-penguin-related attraction. Well, no, this is penguin-related, too. You can't escape them. Mm-hmm. So uh, P- Port Lockroy uh, used to be a French expedition base, and then it was owned by the British. 
and now there's a historic museum there. Mm -hmm. One thing Catherine and I thought was cool is that there's a public post office there where you can buy stamps and you can um, leave letters or postcards to be posted. In fact, um, I think about 70,000 pieces of mail come through this post office every year. Oh yeah, that's a, that's one of the highlights of, of your your time in Antarctica is to have a, a letter posted from, you know, with a stamp on there from that base, you know, from Antarctica. So, you know, a lot of people go there. And there's also a gift shop there, so you can actually buy a t-shirt and, and things like that. And, um, you know, they use the proceeds that they raise from that to renovate some of the other sites. And, you know, one thing that's interesting about that is, you know, the, the visiting of the tourists is actually part of their um, scientific research because part of the area is reserved strictly for penguins. Half the island is for penguins, yeah, right? Half the island is and for penguins. And half is for people. And half is for penguins and people. So, so stay on your side. Yeah, stay <laughs> on your side. And they want to observe like how the people, having people there um, affects the penguins. That's so fascinating. Yeah, and apparently so far they haven't really found any deterrent or any disadvantage to having people there with penguins. You know, mm -hmm. They seem to be able to adapt and it hasn't really affected their breeding or anything like that. Another cool uh, Air, Air quotes. quotes. <laughs> thing about Antarctica is um, you can see the Aurora Australis, which pretty much just the southern equivalent of um, the Aurora Borealis in the north. It's the southern lights. Uh huh. Basically, it's you know the Earth's magnetic uh, field colliding with electrons or photons, and it you know forms pretty colors that you can see in the sky. Yeah, it looks pretty beautiful. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our visit to the South Pole, and if you'd like more information, check out our blog. Yep, we'll have some practical information for you there soon. And um, I guess we'll see you next time for more cool stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.